Hello and welcome back to St Michael's Hill. Today's video is the follow-up to the community poll I did a few weeks ago. Um, if you didn't see that video, I basically just asked my uh, viewers um, to pick which of these four uh, items that I'd be working on and filming during the lockdown. Um, I think I said at the time, but certainly if I didn't, it, it's true to say that uh, the lockdown's going to be going on a fair while, I think, and uh, there's a good chance I might uh, work on more than uh, one of these projects and certainly um, might end up filming more than one as well. But um, quickly to run you through the uh, the results, there were three people that wanted the uh, buffer stops. So thank you for that, but uh, certainly not the winner. Um, next up was the weathering of the uh, Backman uh, ZKA wagon. Um, now, I've actually already started that a little bit. It's not very clear, um, but I just started kind of doing that anyway. Um, so that will probably uh, be finished and shown off in a monthly update, but I haven't uh, started filming that one. The uh, two that were the kind of the most requested were these two, of which um, I think we had 11 votes for the uh, inspection platform. So the winner with more than half the votes was the uh, Cambrian Dogfish Wagon. Cambrian Wagon was the overwhelming uh, winner. So in this video, I'm going to be uh, opening it all up building it all, and then uh, painting and weathering it as well. This version of the kit does include wheels, uh, which some Cambrian kits do, uh, most of them don't. Uh, so I will be able to do that, although there are no couplings, so I'll have to dig around in my uh, stock box to see if I have any that are suitable. Um, if not, that's not a problem. Um, I'll get the wagon kind of built and we can add those later. As there's going to be a fair bit of process in uh, getting the wagon built, painted and weathered, I'm going to uh, probably not film every second of the build. If you want to see that sort of video, Alex Hill recently did one of a uh, salmon wagon from Cambrian, so I will certainly leave a link to that one in the uh, description below. But this one will basically be uh, my usual style of kind of build it and show you at uh, various steps and how I'm getting along. So here's everything that comes within the kit. You've got uh, instructions, a few sprues of various pieces, the main kind of uh, hopper shell, and then a thin piece of wire. And then to build the uh, kit, I'm just gonna be using scalpels, uh, some plastic magic, uh, super glue uh, potentially. And I've just got a brush here just to kind of manipulate any uh, joins or anything like that. So that's what I'm gonna be using. The uh, first section is probably gonna be to build the uh, uh, chassis but before we do all that I need to remove um, all the parts from the sprues and uh, clean them all up. These Cambrian kits do come with a, a little bit of uh, flash from the uh, uh, injection moulding so that's what I'll be doing first getting everything kind of in order and uh, I've got a kind of clean space to kind of keep all the parts uh, so they uh, don't go uh, missing or anything like that so that's what I'm going to be doing first. So I've now cut out all the parts and uh, filed them down. This one actually was uh, a lot better than the previous Cambrian kit I bought. Uh, a little bit of filing was required, but nothing too bad. The next step is going to be to fit the uh, wheel bearings into the back of the saw bar. Um, so you can see these holes here. I'll just take the uh, the wheel bearings. So I'm going to use a little bit of uh, super glue for that. And once that's done, um, I'll be uh, adding the uh, brake shoes and the uh, brake wheels to the uh, bottom of the sole bars and uh, at that stage I'll be back with you. So the bearings are now in place and I'm going to uh, add the brake shoes. Um, the thing we need to make sure is that they're kind of lined up correctly for the wheels and to do that in an ideal world um, I just need to check the back-to-backs on these wheels are going to be right. Might as well do it now. Um, so if you have a back-to-back -back guide, you just slot it on, make sure they're about right, and then you can kind of uh, just place them into the bearing and uh, make sure that the, uh, the brake shoe is in the correct position. So I'm gonna do that now. Once they're all in position, um, I will move on to the uh, brake hand wheels, and they go onto the brackets that uh, are just here, a small little bracket there. So that's what I'll be doing next. And uh, once that's done, I'll uh, get back to you. The brake shoes are now in position. Um, I've just used a bit of uh, plastic magic, which seems pretty good so far. I'm not, not a product I've used before, but fairly happy with how it's going on. Um, I'm just using uh, the time now to basically prime the brake handles. They're gonna be painted white 
um, whereas the most the rest of this under frame is going to be a black color so I just want to make sure they're painted before I put them in position really um, the next job is going to be um, to put the uh, shoot together so I'm going to work on that and again once that's done I will to get that in position and kind of show you what that looks like. Um, I find with these wagons, if you think about the painting as you go along, it, it gets a lot easier. So most of the under frame and uh, possibly the shoot as well will kind of start off uh, black and then the uh, kind of body uh, or the hopper will be a grey colour. So I'm just going to make sure that uh, I kind of paint those as I go and then I can uh, finish off the painting and uh, detailing a lot easier later rather than painting uh sorry creating the whole thing and then masking it back up to paint so it just makes sense to do that uh, whilst we go along so there we go the shoot and the chassis have uh, been put together next job for me is going to be just to prime both of these in a gray i will then go on to paint the uh, most of the chassis black um the shoot is a, is a tricky one um it probably was originally painted black i just need to check um, but either way, it's going to be pretty heavily weathered. The uh, shoe obviously got a lot of damage from kind of uh, stones. So it was often kind of a very light grey or white colour. But uh, I will check those. But certainly the first stage is to prime both of these now that they're dry. The main chassis has now been primed and is ready for uh, a black coat of paint. The uh, upward supports are all going to be white, as is the end handrail and the uh, steps. So I've masked them off with a mixture of masking tape and mask all. Uh, so that's ready now, uh, as soon as that's dry, to take the black paint. Once that's done, I'll be able to uh, remove those uh, masking sections and then hand paint the uh, rest with white. And then I'll be able to add the brake um, handles on, which have been uh, painted white already. Once that's done, I'll be able to move on to the next section, which I believe is the attachment of the hopper. Um, I'm also going to prime that at the same time, just so it's all kind of ready to go. Um, it's going to end up being uh, grey um, in the civil engineer's livery. I'm not sure if the grey is exactly the right uh, shade, but I will uh, look into that and uh, I'll go from there. But uh, the next section is obviously to get this all painted black. Whilst that's drying, I'm going to be painting the chute and probably the inside and outside of the hopper in kind of rusty colours which is going to help me uh, with the weathering later. I will end up um, spraying over the top in a grey but I want to be able to kind of pull some of that rust through from underneath so uh, I'm going to be uh, doing that. Uh, I'm going to be using enamels to do that. I've got uh, Mat 62 and Mat 168 from Humbrol um, that I will use to do that initially. And once that's done, I'll uh, show you what the next step's going to be. So there's the uh, overall kind of rust colour. I've actually uh, used the Humbrol colours, as I said, and I've also used a little bit of rust as well. That's a fairly kind of nice overall kind of colour. I'll give that a varnish and then I'll be ready to paint the grey back over the top once uh, a few areas have been uh, masked off with a bit of mask on. Something um, that I'm looking at is uh, some pictures. So for example, this one, um, which is taken from Flickr. Uh, a copyright of this is Steve Jones, so it's Steve Jones's photo. Um, but as you can see, there's kind of, uh, the inside of the wagon has got kind of an all over rust look and the outside's got kind of uh, patches. So I will make sure that uh, when I've masked off, uh, it'll be just very small sections. And when the delivery goes back on top, it'll kind of uh, hopefully look a little bit like that. The painting uh, of the uh, wagon is now dry. So I just need to get the uh, bars and all the other bits painted in a, a very light gray or white color. Uh, once that's done, I'll be ready to start uh, connecting the chute and the hopper and the chassis together. So the uh, chassis has been painted. Um, I've given the railings and the steps uh, a quick coat of white paint. That will need a second coat at least. Um, but we're ready to get the buffers on. And once that's been done, I'll look to fit the chute and the um, hopper. They'll be kind of dry fit for now. And then um, once I'm just sure that they'll go on, I'll get back to painting those and adding the weathering effects. When it comes to weathering the hopper, I'm going to try um, a technique with mask all. Um, where I basically use the mask on to kind of uh, 
create areas that I want to show through as rusty on the uh, model once it's finished. When that's uh, all fully dried, I'm going to be uh, going on top of it with uh, the livery. So in this case, it will be the engineer's livery of uh, grey and yellow. And then we'll peel the mask all off to reveal the kind of rustic colour underneath. So the uh, grey layer is now on. I'm just masking up uh, for the yellow stripe. I'm going to be using a uh, warning panel yellow for that. And it'll basically just go on the side of the wagon. The ends of the wagons were completely grey, so I'll leave those grey. I'll mask the rest up. So in the end, I decided to um, use an airbrush um, for the yellow. There are a few areas, as you can see uh, here, where uh, where the mask goal was uh, slightly above and below the line, the paint kind of got drawn round around it. I was using uh, an acrylic paint, so not going to be a problem to get that off. I started the peeling process, as you can see, and it's, it looks fairly rough, but I think with some additional weathering, it's going to be quite nice. Uh, it certainly gives a very good kind of uh, paint peeling effect, um, but it certainly does need a lot more work to kind of get it to that stage. I'll show you quickly... Um, what it kind of looks like uh, before. So here you can see um, the uh, yellow where that mask goal is, has kind of come around it even more uh, pronounced. You'll be able to see um, some of these slightly raised areas here, um, and that's where the mask goal is. So it's not a, a horrifically uneven uh, paint, um, although I think I probably did go slightly heavy. You can see a little ridge. Uh, between the yellow and the grey so I just need to kind of uh, probably sand that back a little bit but uh, I'm going to try now and uh, film some of the uh, mask gold coming off uh, if I can and uh, I'll get back to you once that's been done. So as you can see the uh, mask gold uh, just starts to peel back if you go careful you can kind of uh, get it all to come come away nicely starts to leave kind of patterns like that and you can see kind of the chip paint around it um, again on this yellow section you just gently peel back the paint reveal the mask hole you can use tweezers or a cocktail stick or anything really to kind of work at it as long as it's uh, fairly small and delicate you can kind of start to pull at it and it starts to come away um, so there we go that's pretty much the basics I'll, I'll get the rest of the wagon done once it's done, I'll uh, I'll get back to you and we can look at what additional weathering techniques I'm going to use to kind of bring it all together. So I've managed to uh, remove most of the overspray uh, using some acrylic thinners. Uh, the rest of the paint is enamel, so there's no real problems with that. I was quite lucky. Um, but I've managed to pick off the uh, the sections of mask oil. And it's kind of given me a, a fairly nice effect to start building from. Um, the next stage is going to be to add some decals to the uh, wagon, so uh, dogfish and um, the tops uh, code and everything like that. Once that's done, I'll give it a coat of varnish and leave the hopper. In the meantime, I'm going to be um, adding some more kind of detailing to the wagon. There's various uh, parts that still need to be added. Um, once that's all in place and the hopper's dry, I'll glue it all together. And then it will be a final weathering, um, focusing a lot more on the uh, chassis and the footplate as well as the, uh, the side of the wagon as well, just to bring everything back in a little bit. And uh, that should be us moving towards uh, the finish of the wagon. So I'll, uh, I'll get back to you once the decals are on and the uh, rest of the wagon has been glued together and then we'll do the final weathering. It's been a while now since I've uh, last looked at this project, to be honest. Um, I've been waiting for uh, various things to arrive, including some transfers, which uh, Alex Hill has uh, kindly sent me. They finally arrived and it's time to kind of get back round to having a look at the uh, wagon. And my kind of views on uh, how it was looking, basically I just don't think it looks that great. So I'm going to have to do a lot more work to kind of get the kind of rusting looking right and, uh, and get the weathering done. So the first thing I want to do is uh, pop a bit of gloss varnish and onto the wagon and, and get the, the decals on. And then I'm going to really look at how I go about weathering uh, both the inside, which I'm not massively happy with, although the base colour is not too bad, and the outside, which I think needs a lot of work. Um, the underframe hadn't been given any sort of weathering at all, so it's not too much of a problem. Um, I also do need to uh, fit in some more railings uh, and things like that to get the uh, wagon sorted. So the next step with these wagons is to uh, 
add a little bit more rusting on the outside. I'm looking at various uh, reference pictures as close as I can get to the time and uh, some of them are in a real state, some of them are kind of uh, a lot more pristine. It really just depends when the uh, wagon was painted and I guess given a bit of an overhaul. I've gone for something that looks like this um, with some kind of finer rust spots and, and things like that. Um, there is an area uh, just here which is still kind of a bit too uh, rusted for me. So what I'm going to do, and I've seen this on a uh, on a prototype picture, is just uh, put kind of a, a lighter grey patch where maybe it's been um, repaired or something like that. So that will feature on there. Now the way I've gone around getting uh, this effect is kind of with a sponge and then a brush. Um, I'm going to try and uh, quickly show you how that's done and then uh, it's just a case of uh, doing the uh, underframe and getting that weathered. The first thing that I'm going to do to prepare this uh, wagon for a bit more weathering is to take a file uh, to it and just kind of sand back some of the areas where you can see this kind of big bubbles of paint from the mask gold process like that corner there just where it's flaking it's just uh, doesn't look right it looks completely oversized so i'm going to do that and then um with a sponge i'm just going to dip it in a uh, kind of dark gray paint so slightly darker than what's already there and just create some kind of very kind of light sponge marks which are going to be the uh, basically the beginning of the uh, chipping uh, and uh, I'll basically take um, those as kind of the uh, main chips and go from there. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. So it's now been filed down a little bit and I've added the uh, the dark spots. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, take a brush, very fine brush, and just kind of start to maybe connect a few of those, add a little bit more kind of uh, grey around areas where I think would be uh, chipped by the paint. I'm also going to try and get uh, in the recess under the wagon. It's quite difficult, but um, I'll probably just try and get a very small piece of sponge and put it on the end of a brush or something to kind of uh, get a similar pattern underneath. Um, once that's done, um, I'll be ready for kind of adding some uh, rusting effects. One also thing, this is going to be the kind of centre point of a lot of the kind of rusted chips. So the uh, bigger areas like above the two transfers there, I'm going to add some dark grey in there by a brush to make it look like that's kind of been uh, really chipped back to the, uh, to the base metal and uh, the rust will go on top of that. So as you can see, I've added a little bit more kind of... Uh, Chipping effects, I've also splattered a, a little bit of uh, the darker and the lighter paint. Once this is dry, I'll be ready to add a uh, streaking effect, which I'm going to be using the uh, MIG um, rust streaking effect to get uh, some more kind of interesting rust tones on the, uh, on the side of the wagon. So now I did that uh, rust streaking effect, and for the most part, I'm pretty happy. There's a few areas by the uh, data panel that I just need to tidy up with a, a little bit more thinners, um, but generally uh, I'm quite happy. I've done it slightly lighter than uh, the other side, um, but I have added that little patch that I was talking about. That'll need a little bit more kind of uh, highlighting with some slightly darker greys as uh, that's uh, going to be finished off, but uh, getting there. The next job is to look at the inside of the wagon. I'm going to be using a um, paint I picked up a while ago from Games Workshop which has uh, been used in a previous video, kind of doing this sort of thing. It's called Typhus Corrosion. Uh, it's just really kind of a nice textured, rusty coloured paint. So I'm going to pop that on and then add a little bit more kind of colour on top. I'm really going to be focusing on the kind of uh, top of the wagon, as the, generally this will be uh, loaded up uh, eventually. So um, I'll make sure that the uh, rest of the wagon has got kind of a nice coloured finish and it's running empty but I think most of the time this will be running full um, so I'm going to concentrate mostly on the top half. So the typhus corrosion is now in place you can see as it's drying uh, there's kind of a, a gritty texture which kind of looks like a, a rusted metal uh, certainly kind of horrible uh, kind of decayed wet uh, look so once this is fully dry, um, it will go a lot more matte. And then I'm going to add some more kind of uh, rust streaking effects over the top. Start to add a little bit of colour into the body of the wagon. Um, the Games Workshop paint is quite dark. Uh, so I've added some rust colour. I will add a little bit of uh, white wash in a minute. See, these wagons tended to carry ballast and, uh, and things like that. So especially when it was new and going to site, it would be quite clean, quite chalky. Uh, so certainly there will be some that uh, 
kind of came off inside. I'll do the same on the uh, scoop, uh, sorry, the shoot. I've given that a, a coat of the same um, Games Workshop paint and then added a little bit more of a wash. It's kind of darkened up quite a lot, which is probably uh, makes all the difference really. So I'm going to add that white wash and then I'll probably call this done. I've added the detail back onto the end of the wagon. Um, including the handrails and the uh, the wheels to kind of assume assume they open up the chute so that's uh, all been done um, I've added some kind of light weathering to the uh, frame you can just see a few rust spots and I've generally just toned it down a little bit uh, with some powder so quite happy with how that's looking see the insides kind of had some uh, kind of rusting pattern and some kind of white uh, to it Still a little bit wet, so it kind of looks a little bit shiny where the, the white's gone on, but generally try to kind of pull it in the kind of areas that uh, it'll be had. But it just generally looks like a, a worn down, um, rusted kind of wagon. So this is uh, pretty much it. I'm very happy with the uh, result. Just thought it'd be interesting to compare it to the um, the Dapol weathered uh, wagon as well. Um, this is one that's in my collection. So I think there's obviously... A difference in the style that I've gone for but I think overall uh, the one on the right has pretty much just been peppered with um, kind of frame dirt type colour all over this is a factory weathered finish the uh, the insides of the wagon kind of similar but again um, see quite a lot of the kind of detailing there maybe uh, they've gone for a little bit more of the white the, the wagon generally obviously is uh, slightly higher quality than the the kit built one but uh, generally pretty happy with how uh, how both look or how my one looks certainly i might try and uh, remove some of this factory weathering and, um, and improve on that a little bit but uh, generally i'm pretty happy with how that's come out so there you go the wagon is now complete i'm very happy with the results of the uh, the work that i put in from the point where um, i'd left it and came back to it uh, the differences i hope you can see huge uh, it's gone from something that i really wasn't happy with to something that i gladly run the layout next to the uh, uh, helgen uh, wagons as they're uh, going to be in a, a train together i'm going to do something which i would never normally do for a video which is apologize for how long it's taken to come about um, usually i'll model uh, at my own pace and record as i go and the videos go up whenever they go up however this was uh, a fan or a subscriber um voted video that was uh, done at the beginning of lockdown so i'm very sorry for anyone who's been waiting on it but uh, i hope you agree that it's been worth the while i will probably end up collecting more of these wagons and, uh, and putting them together um to build a nice rake it's going to be uh, fairly uh, expensive to go for the helgen version so this is a, a nice alternative um, there's certainly going to be lots of uh, different kind of paint effects to go for uh, pristine ones as they were often seen but also ones that were in a far worse state than this where the uh, livery was barely seen through the kind of uh, rust and, and, and all that sort of stuff so keep an eye out um, on the kind of future layout for uh, for these popping around but uh, for now I will leave it there thanks very much for joining me uh, this week on St Michael's Hill and I will see you again soon bye bye